Hey, it's Tony Brown. Um, you might be looking at this video before or even after the um, episode of Judge Mathis with me and my mom air, airs. Um, you know, in which case, we were the plaintiffs and we lost our case about our cat trying to get her back, our cat miracle. Um, <clears throat> some fact, some fact is because Judge Mathis thought that when he, you know, I was being rude, disrespectful, you know, when he asked me a question, I was not just emotional plus crying from earlier. Post an Azu drill acting up. Don't gave me some water, a little cup of water. Appreciate that. Um, you know, and I just said, ask her. You know, it's just like that. Was he trying to be mean? Was he trying to be sound or snappy? Just emotional. And basically, like, I believe, because it was yesterday. I ain't get no sleep. Can't get no sleep. Nothing. Just worry about it. So. I believe that was unfair, you know. But. Yeah, so. Let me backtrack. So, <clears throat> 2009 on my birthday, 2018, 2018 on my birthday, November 9th, me and my mom was evicted from our place of residence due to a slum landlord from the church. You know, it was dark times ahead because we homeless, we never been like that before, you know out on the street, homeless, nowhere to go, it's scary, it's, it, it's, it's scary, so, <clears throat> that's why I had cried, you know, before I even got farther into the story, I had cried, because just thinking about that, man, <sighs> nowhere to go, with your mom, homeless, do everything for your mom, you know, and yeah, so that's why, ooh, that's why I have broke down, that was yesterday, October 27, 2022, you know, when me, I take it, the show, but yeah, so, um, we had a cat miracle, so, we have four days to come back and get the rest of our things out of the apartment, including Miracle. Um, I put on Facebook, uh, anyone out there that is willing to take in our cat until we find somewhere else to go, you know, because we're homeless. I wrote people on Facebook, but... Uh, Another, I do extra work for TV shows and movies. An extra by the name of Roosevelt. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have worked with him doing production assistant work too. When this, um, um, like it's supposed to be a movie on Amazon, but it never came out called Belladonna. I have worked on that like the year prior. No, the same year, I, I believe. I forgot. But yeah, you know, I, I knew him for a bit on Empire and other two shows, you know, Converse and whatever. So I trusted him. You know, I trust, still do trust. So um, he took in our cat Miracle. Um, He told me like a week later on that he had to go to California to model for this clothes. It said, clothing line say California on it. Uh, it might have been with Hollister or I don't know who. I forgot the name of the company, but yeah, he told me that um, he had to go to California for a few months or weeks, whatever. You know, he you know, want me to find someone to keep Miracle. That's what he told me. So I put on Facebook again, yeah, who can find, you know, help us out with Miracle, you know, so we get back on our feet, you know. Um, so Roosevelt, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> post an exit drip. So Roosevelt <coughs> called me on Facebook Messenger and say, Hey, Tony, um, 
Indigo. Valerie on the show. Um, you know, Indigo said, um, she could take Miracle in until you all get back on your feet. I'm like, oh, really? He said, yeah, give her a call. So, me, I called her first. She said, yeah, I can take her. Where she at? I'm like, she's over at Roosevelt Place. I gave, you know, her the information. Her and Roosevelt uh, made arrangements for it. And Valerie to pick up uh, Miracle, or her, her cat. My mom called uh, Indigo. Valerie, I'm just say Indigo. That would be known her by. My mom called uh, Indigo and asked her how much she wanted to pay her. You know, to uh, keep Miracle. Um, she said, it don't matter wherever you are. You know, I just want you all to find a stable place. And get back on your feet. You know what I'm saying? Find a stable place. All that good stuff. You know. Um, just food. Cost of food. You know. God, Rachel Ray food. Or this other kind of food from Walmart she did. So. You know. Over the time, we kept in touch with Indigo, visited Miracle Light over four times. So, you know, over the course of four times over that. So, we either Facebook message Indigo, you know, or call her up on the phone or text her in our old phones. You know, we had like a government phone. At the time, we got homeless, but I had got us like a Verizon phone, but both of our Verizon phones had got water damage, you know, because we had moved into a shelter. So, all of the phones had got water damage, so all the calls and texts and, <clears throat> excuse me, screenshots gone, pictures sent gone, so, you know, out of, um, the times we have visited our cat miracle, you know, we gave uh, her money. We gave uh, Valerie and I'm Valerie and I'm gonna say Indigo. We gave Indigo money, you know, like sometimes a hundred, sometimes cash, sometimes a hundred fifty dollars. I think the first, very first time we how much it was like thirty dollars, yeah, thirty dollars. So. Yeah, but we ain't keep no receipt because, you know, it was built on trust. We trust you, you know. Um, man, you know, we know we're in the go house one time. In the go had like a dude over there, dark skin. He was just smoking. I don't know what he was smoking, but he was smoking and had money on him. In the go, I always had like a little. Either one or two hundred dollar bills laying around with them, just money laying around in general. So, I had Apple computers. I don't forget how, like, the laptop notebooks, whatever. So, the guy that was uh, was over there at that time that we had went, like, the <clears throat> second to last time we had went uh, over there. He asked my mom, you ever try heroin before? Or I'm, he just random, like, random, how you try heroin drugs? My mom like, nah. He said, wish we haven't. So, anyway. So, we kept in touch with Indigo. You know, over, 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 until, like, Last year, it's 22 now, <clears throat> I say until like last year, even during the pandemic 2020, you know, we kept in touch with her, you know, uh, 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 been over there, gave her money, kept in touch, you know, um, but like 2021 to 2022 this year, it was like beginning to be like a dry season <clears throat> for the communications. Not on our part, but because Indigo, you know, oh, I'm out of town. I'm busy, yo. I got a back, I got a um, 
backstage audition. He's still recording. I got a backstage audition. Um, and, and over here, I got a, a audition to be an extra over here. I ain't never heard no audition to be an extra before. I've been doing extra work since 2015. I've been doing our audition for the Jello Clinic commercial when I was younger. I was coming out the commercial when I was younger. Got invited to Scotty Pippen birthday party when I was younger. Was a baby model for speakers. I ain't never heard audition to be an extra before. Plus, anyway, I knew Indigo built on trust, not just from Empire, the TV show, but from me and Roosevelt working on the uh, what you call it, Amazon movie that never did come out, Belladonna, and the girl was a character on that. So, you know, that also made me like be more uh, comfortable, comfortable with her keeping our cat miracle. So, like when the dry season came, when it started to slack up, I had to be got our new phones, you know. We contact Indigo, I'm like, okay, you know, we're gonna get a place. We met telling her we're gonna get our place, collect the first shelter, Pacific Art and Mission. That, uh, can I burn it this? Yeah, Pacific Art and Mission. Um, they had us in the program. PGM, they had us in a, a housing program. Um, you know, but the apartments, they asked us, like, where you want to, like, what areas you looking for? How many bedrooms? We told them two bedrooms, first floor, pet friendly. They always gave us, like, one bedroom. Or if it's a two bedroom, it's not on the first floor for my mom because she, you know, uh, can't walk them so many stairs, whatever. Or something like that. So, uh, long, long story short, why we was it? Why we had left Pacific Garden Mission on to the next shelter? My mom had a stroke, a mal stroke. Um, you know, and they talking about they couldn't do anything for my mom. So, y'all asking me, they put my mom in a nursing home. That's how my mom left Pacific Garden Mission. Me, my mom made a full recovery, thank God. But me, um, like, oh yeah, they talking about the guys that have been there two years or less um, and working because I have found a job on Facebook. <clears throat> uh, jobs, I didn't know about Facebook jobs, so you know, I'm messing around on the computer at the library. I used to walk from Pacific Garden Mission to the Harold, Wash <coughs> Harold Washington Library uh, almost every day, like almost every morning. You know, get up by 4.30 um, for the guys, get up by 4.30, breakfast at what, 6 o'clock, 6.30 or 6.30, 6 o'clock, something like that. I always used to eat with my mom. So, again, you know, I used to go on about my day, you know, have chapel services five times a day. And so, I used to be walking every day on the computer at the library looking for jobs. I came up on a job called, it was for fierce staffing, you know, with Ariel Johnson from Detroit. And that's my buddy, that's my friend, that's my boss. You know what I'm saying? She cool. You know? She, she, she cool. So, um, yeah, I went in, got a job at Womanish Experience, 115, no, 114 South State Street, you know, as a host. Um, thank God for that. Uh, at the time that my mom was working with Catholic Charities, she had left at his home health care. I'm doing uh, Catholic Charities, you know, with them. That was 2020. Because Womanish was supposed to be in like 
a three day event, but it lasted for like two years. Then in Miami, but yeah, um, yeah. So I went I became like a rare, very thin line, rare security guard <laughs> for like three, three, four times. And then like a little bartender downstairs, you know, um, mixing the mocktails. So, while I was doing that womanish and also extra work, my mom, she was doing Catholic charities. We had storage, the phone bills. I had to pay my mom pay to ride three, at the time of like $3, but now three twenty five. dollars I had to take like, sometimes I didn't feel like walking to work. I used to walk to and from work almost every day when I worked it. Cause I, I was working like seven days a week, that's how. Almost every day, trying to save up money, trying to save up money to uh, you know get us a place. But yeah, long story short, when I got out of there, it said like God's working two years or more. I mean, yeah, and you know being in the shows, gotta go. So they kicked me out. <coughs> Excuse me, they kicked me out, and I went over to the shows where my mom was at. Cause my mom, she left the nursing home after she got better. She left the nursing home. Uh, you know, went to, I think, what, some hospital. And, um, you know, they brought her to that shelter, which was a uh, Franciscan house. You know, I'm giving you backstory on us, you know, so you could be like, what were you doing at that time? You know, what was this? What was happening? You know, what was going on with y'all? I'm going to get back to Indigo and in Miracle. But yeah, um, yeah, so we had storage, had Ubers, had just get away like from the, sometimes I used to take my mom out to the motel just so she could get away from that environment for like a little while, you know, have a stable mindset, me too, you know, of course, so So, uh, yeah, we kept in touch with Indigo, kept in touch with her. Then, all of a sudden, just lost contact. Lost contact, keep writing, no, no response. Keep writing, no response. Don't know why, but she responds to other people. She be posting on Facebook. No response. No response. Why well, no? Is Miracle okay? What happened to Miracle? Is Miracle all right? Can we come see Miracle? Can we come? You know, all that. I had gave, uh, what you call it, Judd Mathis, producer. I'm not going to say the name, but I had gave the producer, uh, you know, the evidence that we did have <clears throat> that, you know, the conversations between me and Indigo on Facebook Messenger. The conversation that my mom and Indigo had on Facebook Messenger. And the text message my mom had on Facebook Messenger. Um, I mean, oh, yeah, the uh, text messages and Facebook Messenger, I mean. So, but the producer only handpicked it out the certain evidence that he thought was, you know, be more helpful to the case. Um, I mean, yeah, it helped some. <clears throat> post nasal drip, it helped the song a lot. You know, I'm looking for the papers, whatever, so. But yeah, so that's when I contacted Judge Mathis. Um, wow, me and my mom was over here at Franciscan House, Franciscan Outreach, you know, they put me and my mom in a program, you know, to help us with a housing program, to help us with uh, housing called it All Chicago. Um, you know, we had to go down the street to a church one day, I remember I had to, uh, I had to do extra work, and 
then I had to come home early. To my home, I had to come back to the shelter early so I could, uh, you know, meet my mom there for the appointment for the housing at the church down the street. <clears throat> so, you know, we thought we had an apartment. They gave us, you know, we picked out an apartment. People there, you know, our information. So I forgot the name of the church, but. Yeah, so I'm just, it's 20 minutes right now. I'm just trying to fill you in on everything on our part, you know, too. So, why were you doing? You know, was you working? Like I said before, people might ask, like, were you working? Were you doing this? Were you, you know, what happened here? I'm letting you know right now. So, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so, it was on. 86 100 South Laughlin or Ashlyn, one of them. The apartment, you know, that we thought we was going to get for sure. But <clears throat> it wasn't ready. Then the apartment was unavailable. So now we have to find another apartment, you know. Mm -hmm. Itchy. So we had to find another apartment. Uh, that apartment was on somewhere, I think, Crager or something like that, Crager. And, uh, and so, yeah, we had to find that apartment. That apartment had too many stairs. Too many stairs. So, Finally, we found this apartment we're in right now. I'm not going to give out that location. <laughs> no, but we found this apartment through the grace of God. We found this apartment. Looked at it. You know, found this apartment. Plus, yeah. Plus, the plus is God is good. You know, brought us a long way. You know, just wanted to share that too. God is good. So all the time, all the time, God is good. So. Okay, now, get to the court part. Um, after not hearing from Indigo, I just trying to make contact. Not trying to, uh, cause my mom called, you know, not trying to put nothing out on nobody, but they put it out on themselves. Um, my mom called Indigo one day, one time, not in a row, but you know, in one day, 20 times, 20 times, left message, left messages, no answer. I downloaded, let me show you on my phone. I downloaded a burner number app, you know, so just, you know, because at the time, well, every time we had called it, before then, at the time we had called it, it was like, Doop, and hang up. Or uh, it wouldn't say disconnected or your call can't get through. It was just like, not even no voicemail. It was just like, Doop, and <laughs> Doop, Doop, call in. So uh, that's when my mom like, did she block me? I'm like, yeah, she did. Let me call my phone and see that she blocked me. Yep, same name. Dun, dun, dun. Call ended. Dun, dun, dun. Call ended. Call messaging. No answer. Indigo, seen the messages. We've been writing her. She's seen the missed calls. We've been writing her. Nothing. We asked her how miracle is. Miracle still with you? Um, what happened to miracle? All of that. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. So I had downloaded a burner number and uh I had let's see a burner. Oh wait, wait, wait. Burner. Yeah. So I downloaded a burner number and asked it. I asked Indigo. Um, no, I have called. 
no answer. But it did go through. It did it did ring. <clears throat> it did go through. So I texted. I text. If this indigo, question mark. The reply that I got was, no, sorry, you have the wrong number. No, sorry, you have the wrong number. Went back to the burning number after I, you no know, cleaning out my phone or the storage. Went back to the burning number. Couldn't find a text message to screenshot it. Cause I tried to screenshot it and I had too much storage. As you can see right now, my storage, too much, too much storage. So I went back, tried to like go back into where I had three numbers, three burning numbers, but it said I had to renew my plan. So after I renew my plan, erase all my burning numbers. I thought like once I renew my plan, <clears throat> you no, know, I go back to it, same numbers, have the same numbers. But I forgot it's a burner number. So yeah. I, my phone is not burned it. I ain't, I ain't do that. I ain't wipe out my phone, but the number is burned it. So, yeah, she said, sorry, this is not in the go. Or, sorry, I had the wrong number. Sorry, this is not in the go, wrong number. Exactly what the text message said. So, so I'm, I'm telling the moms about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm just contact Judge Mathis, you know, to... Um, see what's going on. So I contacted Judge Mathis, the Judge Mathis show. Because it don't make no sense. This lady offered to get our cat, keep our cat until we can get back on, on our feet. We kept asking her how much, oh, I'm going to get to the um, cash out. We kept asking her how much, um, you know, Money do she want us to give her for the food? Or oh, it don't matter whatever you could give. I just want to see y'all back among y'all feet into y'all own place, into the stable place. You know? Oh, jeez. Mm -mm -mm. Look, people in <laughs> sheep's and wolves' clothing, please, look, do not let your guard down for anything, people. If you are like in need of someone to do you a favor, money favor, or where you give them the money, or screenshot everything, screen record everything if you can. Um, <clears throat> you know, record the conversations, do whatever you have to to have proof of every little single thing. Get to receipts, please. Get receipts. Yeah, so I contacted the judge about the show. Like a week later, they contacted me back. Um, spoke to me and my mom. You know, we um, went through the process of, you know, everything. Like, uh, as far as sending over evidence, which I did, which in our new phones, because our old phones had got water damage, you know, with Verizon, like the prepaid pass to go phone. I got from Walgreens. That's how. And, um, I got a smartphone from Best Buy one time, that phone, like, in the storage. No, not in the storage. I had got water damage. No, the battery. The battery on that phone, I went dead. And that phone is, like, a special kind of phone with, that needs a certain kind of battery that's hard to find. So, yeah, I have, um, uh, send over all the evidence. Send them over um, battery name, you know, and everything. Her phone number, uh, when, you know, when I had filled out the submit your case thing, did that. Um, October, you know, we were told, like, we were going to get, well, we did, but, you know, they picked us up uh, October 26th. So, 
we was at the hotel from the 26th to last night, <clears throat> yesterday, uh, October 27th, 2022. All uh, right, uh, you know, we... Stayed in the room, picked us, you know, we got, uh, collected our belongings. Um, went to NBC Studios. Excuse me. Um, you know, they went through the metal, uh, metal detectors, of course, whatever, went through that process. Um, sat in the green room, me and my mom was in the green room. And, um... Yeah, so producers came in, our producer that we've been talking with, they came in, I'm not going to say he or she, whatever, she, he, I'm not going to say because I'm not going to say their name, but yeah, they had came in, you know, told us another, um, uh, I say producer of the show had came in, you know, uh, after him, you know, went over, you know, stuff with us, it said, sound good, sound good, you know. Um, so, it was showtime, not showtime, well, it's court show, so, you know, it was time to get, you know, go to court, you know, like, going to, on, on set, on the studio, so, uh, the person had came in, and, uh, you know, got me and my mom, you know, we prepared, have our stuff ready, already, we are ready, prepared. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm, 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 you know, those say all rise, you know, I didn't know it was about to start, call me off guard, but yeah, those say all rise, you know, he did his thing, and then Judge Mathis came up, he said, you may be seated, it wasn't like too many people in the audience, I guess due to COVID, whatever, just so, you know, staff. And then, uh, yeah, so he asked our names. I said, Tony Brown. My mom said her name, Patricia Brown, Pat Brown. Um, Indigo said her name, <coughs> Valerie, Valerie Richard, Valerie. Um, yeah, so I said, okay. Joe so Matthew said, okay, start with you. So I told him, you know, how are you doing, Your Honor? I'm kind of nervous too, you know, but not nervous about, you know, the situation, but, you know, just nervous that my post nasal drip going to act up, <coughs> which he did after I, you know, cried and like doing right now. You know, which she did. And uh, I was nervous about, like, uh, you know, being on, like, camera, camera. I've been on camera before, but, you know, like, for a national TV show, being taped. Yeah, so, that's national feeling. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, natural feeling. So, I told them, uh, what went on, as you will see or have seen. In the episode, my mom called. How you doing, Your Honor? Um, yeah, so back in 2009, I mean 2018, November 9th on my birthday, me and my mother, Patricia Brown, was evicted from my place of residence due to a slum board from the church stop right there. The, we spoke to one other producer, she said, don't say from the church. And I, no, I didn't say from the church. I'm telling you from the church because it's already been said. But yeah, she said, don't say from the church because that um, made the church look bad. So so we said, okay. So we just said, a slum lord, a slum landlord. Uh, no, from then, dark times. I said some. I don't know exactly what I said. That was just yesterday. I'm so sorry. I can't sleep. Can't eat, can't nothing right now. Just you know, depressed, sad. Uh, the outcome, yeah. So, yeah. So I, I broke down, and started crying because like dark times. 
even now I'm holding my tears because thinking about all that we have went through, you know, me and my mom, you know, and why we there right now too. I, you know, me being stuck every day almost by doctors taking blood, trying to see what's wrong with me, giving me IVs, you know, giving me um morphine, you know, just really like taking blood away from me, really, because they had to draw blood and see what's wrong with me. Like, I had to do that almost every day. I did them so much that they had to use the other arm because this arm, they couldn't find no veins. I'm so tired. Tired of some stuff. Like, man. You know, some people might say, like, you know, that's a put on. No, it's not. No, it's not. You know, ain't nothing no put on. Ain't no cry no put on. Ain't nothing no put on, man. You know, when you ain't never been in that situation before. You know, <sighs> yeah, so anyway, back to this, um, <sighs> what I was saying, um, you know, I broke down, judge asked my mom, cause my mom already nervous, she ain't never been like in front of the camera before. I have. So I'm nervous for her too. So she never been in front of the camera before. She thought it was gonna be like an audience, but got kind of subtle, you know, when it was no found out it was gonna be an audience. She an introvert, kind of, you know, like around big crowds, like speaking wise. Don't really like, you know, get kind of nervous, shy about it, but She's a good person, a people person, you know. An introvert towards like being on camera for the you know, kinda shy and nervous, you know. But yeah. So Joe Mathis as my mom, as you will see or has seen in the episode. Man, why how many days have you all been on the street? Or yeah, been on the street homeless. My mom said three days. My mom thinking about the three days that we, um, the last, yeah, wait, no more for I say Bernard. Yeah, my mom thinking about the last three days before the <clears throat> day we went to say Bernard that night, the following night, and, uh, I'm not talking about the time I said we went to church that following day. No, it was another time. That was before this is afterwards. My mom thinking about the time that um that we spend the night at the um, outside of a library. It was open. It was the gate was closed. You no know, people at the library knew what's in the wrong situation. They ain't say nothing. You know. It was you no know, police came around, checked on us. It was like my mom and this, and some more people too homeless. Me, and my mom, and some more people homeless. They're just, man, it, it was scary. Insomnia, depression, stress, all scary, man. Plus, stress over thinking about our cat. I remember one time in Jackson Park. I'm gonna come back to that. I remember double double my mom was thinking about the three days we was at the library. I remember one time we was at Jackson Park Hospital. And I said I was weak. I couldn't, you know, stand up really. I was weak. Because my back hurt because I had I had fell off the um bed, you know, that they push you in. I fell off no Yeah, I don't know what it was. I was in a room with my mom. My mom was sitting down. I was in a room on the bed. Doctor left out. <clears throat> I was weak, for real. I was weak from all the blood being taken and stuff. So I was weak. Um, mom kept on her 
me help me. The doctor died. You know, I need some help going to the bathroom. You need a urinal. Refused to give me a urinal. You know, so I got up and tried to go to the bathroom. I fell on my back. I fell on my back trying to get up. So, they, uh, him, some more doctors came back again. My mom said, I told you he needed, like, help going to the bathroom to urinate. Not defecate, but urinate. So, you know, to get raised, my back was bruised from the inside. That was at a little company I'm married. But yeah, my mom was thinking about the three days we was on the streets at the library. That's what she was thinking about. But like on the street all together, including them three days, like hospital, hospital, it had to be, oh my God, two, three months. So, Back to the case. Um, you know, we talking Joe Matthew, Joe Matthew's talking to us. I sent us questions trying to get um trying to get uh, you know, uh, us, you know, correction answers. Sometimes my mom, like when she nervous, she <clears throat> speaks too fast a little bit. And so Joe Matthew was like, hey, ma'am, ma'am. He was like, ma'am, ma'am, okay, okay. So my mom had to slow down and, you know, uh, repeat herself so he could understand it more better. So he said, oh, okay, okay, now I see. Well, you know, so. So, yeah, so we can get into the court more at the end of the case where he, you know, episode where he dismissed our, our case. He had asked um, Indigo something that he had asked me something. The question he asked had asked me, if I'm not mistaken, I believe was, so why haven't you all kept in touch with her about your cat? Why haven't you kept in touch from the time 20? He asked her the same reason. And he asked me the question. So by the time 2020, 2022, I believe he said. Um, why haven't you kept in touch? I said, we have. No, how you might have you kept in touch? I said, I ask her. You know, it's just like that. I ain't mean no harm by that. You know, ask her. You know, it's our cat. Not not speaking towards him. You know, but we didn't want to look at her. We, we did not want to look at her at all because... You know, it'll make us more like frustrated and all that. So we kept our eyes straight at him. <clears throat> we decided, you know, we were like, we're not going to look at her, like try not look at her at all. So I'm like, ask her. So I don't know, ask her. So he, Judge Mathis took that the wrong way. My response, how I said it, and he got offended real easily. And he said, No, sir, I'm asking you, okay? You say, I her, you want me to answer? Okay, I ask her. Now, then, you know, then he, I, if, if that was a question, he said, I, He asked her, Ma'am, then, 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 okay? Um, case is missing. Boom. I was so quick. Because at the beginning of the, um, and they're like that, that that wasn't even fair to be honest. You go into judge based off of emotions. That's not right. That's not right at all. Um, you know. So at the beginning of the um of the defendants. You know, uh, testimony. She gonna bring up, uh, you know, well, 
Your Honor, I was, ever since I was a little girl, well, well, when you was a little girl has to do with anything about right now. But I put 45 minutes and some seconds into explaining everything. I'm willing to, man, I'm really, I'm willing to uh, answer any questions, which I don't know if anybody have. But yeah, I'm, I put like 45 minutes into explaining everything. You know, from the time we got homeless until why we got homeless until what we were doing until, you know, we, what happened until the, you know, time of taping. And she talking about the, ever since she was a little girl in elementary school, she wanted to be a veterinarian. I love pets. I'm an advocate for pets. I am too. <clears throat> I'm with, uh, I'm with the Pet Association. I don't know where my card at, but I'm, I'm with the Pet Association. I'm a member. You know, I, I love pets too. You're talking about. And I tell them I had dogs and never had a cat. Cats going to be just fine with that. Look, we just, get down to the nitty gritty. You know, we talking about right now. We're not talking about all 60 some years when you was in elementary school, all that. So why are you, why, why are you having you? Not become a veterinarian now. You know, he started a conversation off off the topic with her. You know, he didn't ask me or us, uh, what are we doing now? <clears throat> Cause when he asked something, he uh I, I, I asked him, Oh, you mean right now? He said, No, I'm talking about this time. Oh, I told him. I asked him about it. So he didn't Judge Mathis didn't even say, "Well, I'm sorry that you all been through that. I'm, you know, I'm glad that you all are out of that situation. I'm glad that you are not homeless anymore." He didn't say anything like that. You know, he just went with her from the jump. That's unfair and unruly. You know, in this video, I invoke. The Fifth Amendment of the Constitution. I invoke the Fifth. I invoke the Fifth. So I cannot be prosecuted for anything I say. Freedom of speech. My free will to say what I say. I did not curse. Did not slander anybody's name. But yeah, I'm just telling you like it is. You know, um, that wasn't right. You know, it's like you see it on TV, but it's real different from in person. Uh, you know, someone asked me why. Uh, you know, someone asked me why I didn't. We didn't take the case to a real court, like civil court, you no know, TV show court. I said because. You know, here in Chicago, a big time judge. Here in Chicago, a big time judge. You know, give him a chance, but he didn't get, even give us a chance. Didn't give me a chance. Just based it off of emotions, and that's wrong. So, after Judge Mattis left, I could hear him like fussing, talking. You know, in the back, I'm like, I, me, look, I'm sorry if you thought that I was rude to you or snappy or any way like that, but I was not, um, no, I was, I was trying, if I sounded, like I said, I apologize, I'm sorry, but yeah, it seemed like based off emotions, just tired, stressed, going through something, just, Tired, you know, always like to me, uh, uh, him is a, just a cat. You know, we go here for a cat and check, man, forget all the chicken, ain't nothing about the street. No, like once a oh, cat, dog, whatever you have, even a goldfish, I don't care. If you really bond with that animal, with that pet, it becomes part of your family. You know, it becomes part of your family. 
Um, we had insurance on Miracle <clears throat> with Bibby Insurance, January twenty third, two thousand twenty two of this year. Um, March. Uh, before we even thought about taking her to court, of course, it was even on our mind. March. I had um, Judge Mathis to make my mom a cameo video, a video on cameo, you know, um, because my mom had cataract surgery, you know, to a lift her spirits, you know, because homeless, you know, you know, to keep her spirits up and all. I'm looking for the not somebody outside talking, so ignore it all that. But yeah, um, here the video with Judge Mathis that he made for my mom. So this was in March. So like a week, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So like. Seven to eight months, almost eight to nine months ago. It's October right now. So this video was in March. Is it March 25th? Here we go. Hey, Pat. Judge Mathis here. I'm at one of my favorite restaurants here in Chicago. And I work with a deaf on the bench today. But I wanted to call and encourage you to keep uh, moving forward. I'm very proud of all your accomplishments and all the obstacles you've overcome. That is greatness. And you've done it through service. Working for the Catholic services is really impressive. Your success has come from you serving others, and that's how you move forward. God will continue to bless you. Stay strong and keep the faith. Yeah, so you no, know, that was before we even like thought about like considering even to take in Valerie well in the go to court, you know. Um man, my mom devastated. My mom and devastated. I'm not trying to make nobody seem bad. I'm not. I'm and by nobody I mean the judge Mathis. I'm not trying to make him seem bad. I'm truly not. You know. My mom. I did have to say good vibes. Good vibes. Um just saying like you do a video a cameo video on uh you know and then like I don't know if you know that was us or not I don't know because I ain't mentioned it because that was irrelevant like uh, the defendant mentioned about she always ever since she was a little girl the elementary school one of the that's that's irrelevant too that's irrelevant real irrelevant you know and all that where she been on all, all that ain't nobody got time for that man I, I could have brought up <clears throat> to be just like as she brought up the um you know her <laughs> being a uh, 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 when it be in elementary school and all that, I could have brought up that, yeah, you know, Judge, I've been doing extra work for since 2015. Um, you know, I've worked at Woman and Shakespeareans downtown. Um, man, you know, I'm a security guard at Andy Frame right now. God has continued to be good to us. You know, my mother, she no longer with Catholic Charities, but, you know, because they, no longer serve um, caregivers, but 
help at home do it out, you know? So God is still continuing to bless us. Oh, by the way, yeah, on my daddy's side, uh, my famous cousins are and were uh, Tyrone Davis, um, Stan Shaw, you know, him and son got a TV show on BET, Family Business, and uh, Sam Cooke, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could say all that, but why it's irrelevant, just like her mentioning about the, uh, you know, uh, 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 about, you know, her being in school, elementary school, and what significance does that have to do with the case? What is it pertaining to the case? What possible clause uh, <laughs> that has to do with the case? None, none whatsoever at all. So yeah, I just want to say <clears throat> that, and then you know, though, uh, you know, after John Matthews went out, whatever, fussing, I mean, whatever. Though, um, asked it, me and my mom was it. Well, he asked us to be. Was there anything we want to say to each other? So we did. As you will see, or or as you have seen in the uh, video, yeah, we did. Um, and afterwards, though came by, you know, I told him thank you for the water. I said thanks, thanks again, but so me and my mom left. I I collectively collected up the evidence. Helped my mom out because the lady had to bring my mom to school. Cause they used to have chairs, but the lady brought my mom to school. Um, yeah, so. Jesus. Yeah, it was wrong. It was unfair. It was unruly because they, like I said, based off, based off emotion. You know was the outcome of the video so like if you see me in the like public you see me in public like church or store you know um and you see this video there you go you know or i'll tell you you know look at this video so you can know um so it's based off emotions you know the producers told us like yeah, I get emotional because I I try to hold back tears. We try to hold back tears, even there in the green room. We did help them about my mom, you know, but yeah, we helped about tears. So like when we <clears throat> excuse me, so when we um, I'm not gonna say who, but a person, I say other staff, you know. Offer us an offer. I'm not gonna say what, but you know, I was so generous, still is, you know, generous. So I'm just waiting on that apply right now. Uh, okay, all right. So I'm gonna end this video, and there you have it, the truth.